<laughs> we are joined by uh, two of the three members of the trifecta, which you can hear right here on 104.5 The Team on Saturdays, noon to 3. Uh, Kate Fagan, uh, Sarah Spain, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Go ahead, trash him. No, I'm just... Are you this mic is not fun. Are you trying to just be different? Are yeah, you playing devil's advocate yeah, to I the three-point contest? Yeah, I just don't want to pick Curry or Thompson. I, <laughs> so I'm you sure one of. Don't want to pick correctly. <laughs> yes, essentially. I just don't want to make my decision based on skill or no, talent. Is the question who's going to win? <laughs> let's ask. Let's ask better questions. Yeah. Not who's going to win the three-point, but. Redick, he leads the league at three-point percentage, 48%. This is great because they've instantly got Brady uh, back on his heels. <laughs> he leads the league at percentage. It's I not just, that far-fetched. I, I don't want to dog Redick. I got nothing against him, but I picture him getting to the contest, looking at Curry and Thompson and just a tiny bit of pit <laughs> piddle down his leg. <laughs> just, like, realizing, like, this is not a regular game. Oh, man. Uh, so, so, so glad you guys could join us. Now, we have been breaking this game down 17 ways from Sunday, which is interesting because it will be on Sunday. Um, is this going to be the last rodeo for Peyton, and can he go out on top? I do think it's going to be the last rodeo. I don't think he's going to be going out on top. I think it should be the last rodeo for sure. I mean, we've, we've talked about this on our radio show as well. Um, I mean, I just don't think that the Broncos, the, the way they beat the Patriots was because they were able to have this, like, one game plan to put pressure on Tom Brady, and that was going to be able to work. And historically, he didn't perform that well when he had pressure on him. I don't think that exists for the Carolina Panthers. There is no sort of, like, Mm, X's and O's tweak that they can do that I think is going to be able to overcome the huge disparity at the quarterback. Well, and the big difference there, too, is that the Broncos are one of the worst teams against designed QB runs, and the Panthers have some of the highest designed QB runs in the league, and a guy that will succeed whether you put that pressure on him and give him space or whether you let him sit in the pocket. So he's actually better if you force him to be a pocket QB, but the way that he's played this year, the way their offense has played, it's kind of impossible to imagine a defense, even one as good as the Broncos, slowing them down enough and that to me is the difference they will certainly slow them down it will not be a bloodbath like it has been in the first couple playoff rounds but when it comes down to it will Peyton Manning on one leg with a messed up neck shoulder arm everything be able to put enough points on the board so that even if the Broncos defense can hold the Panthers to 31 24 something manageable how are they going to put up enough points I, I that's my I think it's going to be 31 17 wow I think it's going to be 24 to Right. I'm gonna let they're, I'm gonna let them kill me now. I think it's 2017 Denver. A lot of people are saying that, yeah. but I just to me I just don't think that it's. First of all, then you have to count on no off no defensive touchdowns for the Panthers based on mistakes by Peyton Manning. And if he plays mistake free ball, that's likely going to be a very conservative game, trying to work the run game, passes eight to ten yards at a time. How are they going to get enough points to make up for what I imagine will be a Panthers? Not like a JJ Reddick prediction. <laughs> He yeah, leads the league at first place. I mean, you're at least in the realm of right. Yeah. Like, like this could happen. Yeah, like, you don't I, sound yeah. like a total like, idiot. Right. The, and the when the same any I mean, given Sunday, here, you know, honestly, yeah. 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 when it's yeah. 56 to seven, I'm going to come back to all of you on Twitter and <laughs> say that you said that. No, I do think it should be his last rodeo, though. And I think I think on Levitard show they figured out that it, it's he actually has the worst stats of any quarterback in the Super Bowl. And the last one they went back to was my guy Rex Grossman in 2007. And then they were like, and also, that's the one Super Bowl that Peyton Manning's won. Guys, was when the opposing team was Rex. Sarah's that she'll always make it about Chicago sports. I, I've so. heard that. Like, my <laughs> producer honestly. actually messaged me right before you guys sat down. Don't forget that Sarah's from Chicago. <laughs> I, mean, uh, the, I, won't, I won't let you forget. You guys, I turned my iPhone clock on to see how long it took for her to mention something about yeah. Chicago. It was, um, I think it was 4.42. Yeah. We got a Rex Grossman. I meant to bring a bottle. We were going to have a drinking game out of it every time she said yes. Chicago. You we forgot do. it? I, oh. listen, I, well, I was too was busy laughing show, at Reddit. Though, guys, of course. Like, guys, how can you how can you talk about the Super Bowl without bringing up Rex Grossman? That's Such an integral part of Super Bowl history, really. That's what I say. I think we, when you bring up University of Florida, that's the last the only, only time you can bring up Grossman. <laughs> All right. That's right there. All right. The one spot where the Broncos appear to have the distinct advantage is their wide receivers against the Panthers secondary. Can the Broncos offensive line give Peyton enough time to throw, though, to get it to those guys? And can Peyton make the throws? Yeah. Peyton could throw it 15 yards if he gets time hard, to. Hard enough? 
<laughs> I think so. Hey, well, that's I the picked thing. Carolina. That's the thing, so. though. The speed of the of the Panther secondary, he cannot throw ducks like that. And if you look at a guy like Josh Norman, who has succeeded whenever you put him up against a guy, when you try to play that game of who's better, the secondary, the Panthers, or the wide receivers, Josh Norman steps up. And he's not as good against guys in the slot, but because Peyton Manning is so limited in a certain span, and he only has so many yards to work with in theory, you can eliminate the deep threat, and then you really cut off that advantage that you're giving those wide receivers. I just look at Cortland Finnegan, and I think that sooner or later it's going to be Emmanuel Sanders on Cortland Finnegan, and that's six for the Broncos. It's going to be great when and Finnegan way, steps Chicago. in front of a duck, and then... Just, I'm just going to say Chicago at the end of everything, just so I feel yeah, right. No, no, and then uh, you guys can be connected. Yeah. And then we can Sausage. We don't catch our plane until 11. We get, we get drunk right Perfect. after. Perfect. Can I deviate <laughs> from the Super Bowl for one second. I, listen, since, I, since, since I got made Just fun go of, I was going to say, no, is it to talk about J.J. Redick? <laughs> since I got made fun of for not picking Curry and Thompson, are they going to break your Bulls all-time wins record then? And will you be incredibly depressed if that happens? Because I, I will be I will be sad, admittedly. I, you know, I'm one of those people who hangs on to those Bulls teams, to Jordan's records, to the team records, and I want them to remain uh, but I love this Warriors team. I love watching them. So if they're the ones who do it, I'll at least be like, all right, that's a, that's a cool group and it's fun to watch. I don't know. The only thing is that they have a very small sample when Steph Curry or Thompson is out or Draymond Green is out. When those guys are injured, it's a very small sample, but there are weaknesses to be exposed when those guys. So it's a matter of health. If one of those guys misses nine or ten games a couple weeks at a time, it's not that hard to get to ten losses, right? You just oh, need right. a couple quick. So that's the only thing is if they can stay healthy, I think they will break the record. But you want to I, ask a question that doesn't have to do with Chicago? No. Yeah, is, I would be sad because the Bulls because beat my the Bulls beat my <laughs> Sonics and that. So we can talk about the '90s Bulls if you want. <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about the Louisville section? Is this just Louisville's way of getting out of of the NCAA slapping on the wrist and them, them <laughs> putting themselves on a no uh, postseason? Yeah, I mean that's how I pretty much always feel when <laughs> schools yeah. self-impose bans right. or self-impose any sort of penalty. Um, yeah, I mean, we, th this was a story that we talked about so much, well, what was it, like three months ago or so when it first came out. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, that's absolutely what's happening here. And I, I think the tr the troubling part, I guess, for me is, like, I would, I want to know exactly what happened so that we can figure out the culture and make sure that this is not something that continues to repeat itself. Fix the problem instead, seen, of just, yeah. instead of just slap ourselves on the wrist. Because that's, the that's the point of the self-imposed bans is to say, it's all taken care of. You know, <laughs> we have the way yeah, we've got it. You guys don't need to give us any more. Yeah, you don't need to do any digging. Nothing yeah. to see here. Yeah. Nothing to see. It's and all so, fine. of course, you're like, all right, well, at least something's going to happen here. You know, there's going to be some sort of penalty because you can't always guarantee that there will be. But on the other hand, I care less about Louisville's penalty, and I care more about understanding specifically the culture. Right, right. What exactly, if anything in the book is true and how much of the book Well, and a lot of people think... And say, even if every single word in the book is true, who cares? Just people having fun. And I'm like, there's a there's a path that that goes down. And yeah. then there's a lot of things that can happen. Bad, bad things. We heard your extra point uh, a little while ago. And what do you guys really think of Johnny Manziel and the situation he's in right now? I think people have... I think the signs have been there for a long time, and people have found excuses to not have to really look at it the right way. It's been, oh, he's the second coming of the affluenza kid. He doesn't care about football because he doesn't need it because his family has so much money. He's spoiled. These are choices. I don't, I don't feel sorry for him in that he still has some impetus in what he does. But I do have to say that I think people who don't give drug and alcohol addiction its fair due and they don't consider it a disease are really not looking at the problem correctly. I don't think he, I don't think someone makes this many bad decisions in such a short amount of time when they're really making decisions with their brain, right? I think right. that he needs serious help. I think he is a damage to himself and others, and football is the last thing that needs to be focused on. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think Sarah and I have been on the same page about this topic. Forever. For a while, you know, having people in my life who, you know, have gone to, to rehab or are recovering alcoholics, I mean, it's, it's tough to just want to continue to to bury Johnny Manziel right now. Although, you know, some of the new reports about yeah. these interactions with his girlfriend, I kind of look back on, on like, Brandon Mercer was here earlier, yeah. and he was a guy who um, very publicly was like, here's what I was struggling with, and those mistakes that he did make, you can give him a second chance because he did a lot of work to correct what was going on with right. him that led to those other mistakes. Now, that's 
if I'm trying to be optimistic about Johnny Manziel, we would all be like, he needs to get that help so that maybe he can get a second chance if he has figured out the reasons why his behavior has been like this in the past. I, uh, I did a little research before you guys came on, of course, the trifecta. You can hear it right here on 104.5 The Team, noon to three on Saturdays. Urban Dictionary says it's a perfect group of three. Wow, see? That's why we picked the name. They get, they get you. They get you. Everybody knows that when you hit it, the trifecta that is, <laughs> you leave satisfied. Yep. Yeah. We have horse racing right. in upstate New York, and I've never hit it. Yep. You've never... Uh, Brady yeah. never. Okay. I mean, anybody who picks Braddock, I don't know how they that got to horse racing. Yeah. No. The trifecta. trifecta. Well, I know, but right. where we were... In where we were. Well, well we I hope you've never hit it yeah. with a horse or... <laughs> Oh boy! I, more I could, horse I racing. Could, I could do this all day, but, <laughs> but you guys have more, more uh, Well, in that case, you have a better chance of hitting the trifecta. Well, I would if you can do it all day, that's usually well and all night. Um, so there you go. <laughs> well, we're gonna give our official picks. Uh, thanks to the trifecta for stopping by. Make sure you listen to them every Saturday, uh, noon to three. It's probably the only way you'll ever learn how to hit it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>